Alright guys, this video here is for newcomers to the subreddit r slash mech market because it can be a daunting task when first trying to navigate the subreddit. So this video here is going to teach you the ins and outs of the subreddit and hopefully make it easier for you to take it on. Um... I'll show you how to navigate as a moderator and user of the subreddit for two years. Um, people completely new to Reddit, the first thing you'll have to do is get enough karma to be able to post. Um, there are lots of ways to gain karma. You can interact on other subreddits, post on other subreddits, but do not use uh free karma subreddits or you'll be caught and you will be banned um it's easy to tell if you have used them um it, it's just not worth it at all um after you have your karma please read the rules here is the rules page we will go back and you can go down here Scroll down, read the rules. I know there is a lot of rules to read, but it is, it is imperative that you read the rules. Is, and just memorize as much as you can, and you can always come back to the rules later if there's something you forgot or might not understand. It covers everything from general posting rules, your title title requirements, post requirements, pricing, payment methods, um, anything, uh, vendors, uh, giveaways, everything, everything. The rules are key. The first thing you should do, which is the most, all right, well, I already said this, read the rules. Um, so also something you can do to actually raise your trust, your reliability is um, link your heatware account. So if you are a user of eBay and have done sales on eBay at all, um, they will show up on Heatware if you link your eBay account to it. And you can link your Heatware account to your um, profile. Um, you can see down here, my Heatware is right there. And then if I go back to a... I don't know what that is. Uh, so if I go down to, um, we'll comment nice. You can see my heat wear right there is on my name and people can go to that and check if I'm reliable. Um, if I was reliable on eBay. And when you do a trade on Mech Market, you can ask the person, hey, can you leave me a positive review on Heatware? And vice versa, you know? So that's a good thing to do. Um, after completing these steps, you'll be ready to start browsing the sub. So we'll talk about proper etiquette for commenting on posts. Um... Because some of the things you you will see will be insane to a new person to the community, such as prices for certain things, and um just just the general you know the prices. Um, so I'll show you an example. So right here is the OTD three fifty six Mini V one. This keyboard sold for $6,500. The reason this keyboard is so expensive is it was made in around 2012. And it's the rarity of the keyboard. And it, 
This is what you would call a holy grail keyboard. Um, you know, stuff, it, it was so innovative back then, having this over and gasket mount style. And it, it was just, just something that, that people hadn't done. And you can look at the photo album, you know, the keyboard it isn't even in, you know, perfect condition because of the, of the age, but it's such a sought after keyboard. It will sell some of the OTD keyboards will sell upwards of $8,000 and we'll get into the, some of the artisans. So there so, artisans made by a particular person, Gaff. These are the some of the most notable expensive artisans. As you can see for one artisan 550 400 650 650 you know all over $500 and here you can see the artisans right here. This is what they are. Um the reason these are so expensive is cuz one there was so few made of each colorway. And there were so few made in general. And two, he's not making them anymore. So serious, serious collectors who will want to collect one of each colorway are willing to pay insane amounts to get that artisan. And it's just a huge flex to have these artisans. I personally wouldn't buy them, but people do. I personally wouldn't buy an OTD board, you know, unless I had a lot bigger of an income. Even then, I still probably wouldn't justify it since I have a Key Colt, and Key Colt is a really amazing board as it is. Um, so, when you come across posts like this, don't scoff and be rude and be like, what uh, a keyboard should be not be six thousand dollars. This is a rip off. The best way to go about it is to uh, educate yourself and ask, hey, why is this board so expensive? Why are these artisans so expensive? And someone in the chat or in the comment section will explain to you exactly why. So, so in the future, when you see that specific brand or that specific name, you will know why that price is. Air. Um. So let's get into posting. Um, I will do. Posting is 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 one of the most important things in here. Um. This is people one of the things where people get popped the most for uh, rule infractions. Um, for just simple things like timestamp, um, you know, ha having, you know, just, just brackets in the wrong place. Um, so I'll do a, uh, hold on. It's been, it's been a while. So I'm, so this will be, if you're from the U S this will be the format you will, do US Kansas have I'll just put I'll I'll just use an old um Imgur that I have. I'm not gonna actually post this. Have R one purple Clippy. Want PayPal. So we will create a timestamp over here. Copy. Hey. So, this leads into another part of posting. So, as you can see, this keyboard has a ding on 
and you have something that has a bit of damage on it, you want to take pictures from every single angle possible. Be very detailed on that damage um, and even explain in the post um, the relative size. And even put something in the picture up to it like a dime or a quarter to see you know to compare the size um and as you can see on this but i sold this keyboard already but as you can see on this particular timestamp, i had loads of pictures you can see the ding right there you can see in the ding right there the ding right there showing the rest of the keyboard off from all, all angles the bottom, you know, just just making sure. Also, your timestamp, you will need to have a piece of paper in the picture with all of the items you are selling on post. It needs to be legible. You need to have your username and date. And the date cannot be long, older than 14 days. Which I think is too long. I think it should be seven days or three days. But whatever. That's not my decision. And so I will go back to my post. R1 purple. Oops. I can't type right now. Purple flippy. Small thing on back side by USB port about the size of a pen tip. And then and then you see in my picture I have keycaps on it. Make sure to say does not um, with keycaps if you are not selling the keycaps um, with the board then you can add your price I'll just say uh, oops jeez I can't type I can't type Two hundred dollars shipped. Not just PayPal fees and everything. Two hundred eight dollars shipped. And I always write comment before before messaging. All right, and so that's my post. Um, you would you would need to save. The flare, which is selling, ply, and you know, that's an example of a post. You can click the link right here, the hyperlink takes right to the timestamp. Um, if you have more items, you know, you can keep listing them and down, and you know, make sure to be very detailed when posting uh always double check the format of your uh title and then post so we can exit out of that um let me see if i'm i'm missing anything oh also if you're in america and you only want to sell your item in America. Make sure to add somewhere in the post. Um, Con US only. Which is just continental US only. Um, so you don't have people from Korea or Vietnam or China. Uh, trying to buy it. And having, you know, having to spend insane amounts of shipping. Um... So now we're going we're gonna to get to selling stuff from your post. So that you had your post made. Um, 
when it comes to selling things first and foremost is always use goods and services on paypal anyone asks for any other type of payment method venmo cash app prison friends and family say no especially when you're new always goods and services next um make sure the potential buyer's address on their paypal matches their current shipping address if it does not do not accept payment from them until they have corrected it um also do not encourage bidding between other people as that is against the rules um Another very important rule is do not respond to any message unless the person commented, PM'd on your post. Because you will get comments from random people who did not say PM'd on your post who might be potential scammers. So if they did not comment PM'd on your post, do not respond to them. Although it may be tempting because it's more people trying to buy your stuff. Absolutely do not respond to that. Um, let me see where we're at now. Uh, never do partial payments. Like, hey, I'll give you half up front. Half when the items are received. Absolutely not. Not worth it. Never do it. Um, when creating your PayPal invoice, be very, very descriptive. List every little item that is going to go into that box. So for for your purposes and PayPal's purposes, um, list all possible damage, if there is any on it, before packaging it up on your PayPal invoice. Um, what I do is I always take a video of myself packaging the item up, um, just because I have seen, as a moderator, I have seen instances of people saying that the board was cra crushed, you know, when they got it, and the person who shipped it claimed they, they, they packaged it perfectly, so... It's always good just to take a video of yourself re, re, um, packaging it up. Another good idea is to video yourself dropping it off at the post office, UPS, or whoever you're using to ship. Um, Also, as soon as you ship the item, update the PayPal, update the tracking on PayPal as well. You send them a picture of the receipt uh, with the tracking on it, um, so you have it in Reddit Messenger in case any disputes. You know they, it, it, it's on PayPal and on Reddit. Um, when they receive the package. Make sure to confirm they receive the package in the message. Be like, you, you received the package, correct? Make them say, yes, I received the package. And then next, you go to the confirmation thread, which is this, and confirm the trade. So what you will do is, if you're the seller, you'll write, sold, Keyboard to and then you do their username Bob, and you know, and then and then comment. And then what they will do is they will reply under confirmed. That's all they will say is confirmed. We'll we'll scroll down so you can see, you know, like that sold artisan to that confirmed bot. Sometimes the buyer will even confirm it, you know. It's it, it this how it goes. Um, that that way you have every type of evidence possible 
if there is ever a dispute in the future. Um, also, you can check users confirm trades, um, you know, pretty easily to see if they have a lot of confirmed trades. Um, you know, just to, ju just to, um, you know, make sure that they've kind of been in the hobby for a little bit. Um, you can sell to people with zero or one trades. When I was new to the hobby, people sold to me still, uh, no problem. Um, sometimes they just might be a little bit more diligent than, you know, some people who's done something, some 50 trades. Um, so that's really all I got say on selling. Um, the next we're going to be talking about is buying. Remember, this is the same as selling. Make sure your PayPal address matches your current mailing address. And, all, and be just as diligent when buying as well. Another factor plays hugely into buying, and that's patience. Don't jump on the first post you see of an item that you want. Wait a few hours, scrolling, wait even a few days, because you will find a better deal, I promise you. I've waited weeks to find better deals, and it's it's worth it. So be patient. Don't mean to get that FOMO, fear of missing out, because the more people that do FOMO um, drive the prices up, which is what we don't want. Um, also, when getting ready to say you find a post you want, uh, you find the item you want to buy, make sure you comment PMing on their post before messaging them. Most redditors do uh, or most people on back market do not like using Reddit chat. So use regular messenger. It, it it's just a weird thing. Some some will, you know, some will and but most generally don't like uh Reddit chat. So they just use the messenger. Um in your message, ask if it's still available, and you know, sometimes it, sometimes it's often okay to haggle a little bit. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of haggling, offering a little bit lower of a price, um, especially if the post isn't getting a lot of attention. Um, but if it's a highly sought after item, um. You're going to be paying asking price for it because there's going to be a bunch of people messaging, trying to buy it. So you better be quick on the gun. If it fits something that you really, really want and it is a sought after item, in your first message, link your PayPal to it so they can, so they can just send you an invoice straight away. Um. Also, um, never be afraid to ask for additional pictures if oh, the person is kind of acting like they don't want to send you additional pictures or dragging their feet and they aren't sending you additional pictures. Chances are they're hiding something on the keyboard, you know, some damage somewhere on it. And they just took pictures of good angles for their uh, timestamp. Um, it, it, if you're not getting extra pictures, generally just back away from the trade, back off and say, all right, I'm, don't worry about it. I'm good. Um, also, if they ask for anything other than PayPal goods and service, do not go with the deal no matter what and no matter how bad you want that item. There are very few trusted users who trade on their own circles using friends and family, but 
these are people have been trading together for years um and you know they they're tight in the community um but that's not how 99% of it works i suggest for big ticket items that you are buying you ask them to video packaging it up you also you you ask them to video uh dropping it off at the post office just for safety cuz if you're buying a key cult or you know even like a e point five or e six six sixty five you know that's seven eight hundred bucks up to two grand you know that's a lot of money you're putting on the line um it, and it's nothing for them to do that um I also suggest when you receive the item, you film yourself unboxing the item, um, just, just for safety, um, it, it's, especially if the box looks damaged, um, just make sure if any of the, if any of the box, any, if, if any of the goods on the inside of the box are damaged, and it wasn't damaged, you know, in the video of them boxing it up, you have a claim with, you know, whoever they shipped it through to get money back. But that doesn't get you your nice keyboard back. But it does get you the money back to possibly buy another nice keyboard. The damage isn't that bad. You could keep the keyboard still. Um... Also, again, after the transaction is complete, go to the confirmation, you know, confirm the trade, get that all done and settled. Um, trading, trading is something that I haven't dabbled in myself. Um, I've always been scared. Um, I fear getting burned, but many people trade every day successfully. Um, one of the biggest ways they do it is they, each person sends the other person an invoice for like one to five dollars with a description of what they are trading and, and then once the item arrives each way they cancel the, um, you know, the invoice. Another way is, you know, a lot of people use this, there's, there's, people around who are trusted third party members that will both parties will ship the keyboards to the third party member and for a small fee they'll verify keyboards are both good and then then ship them on to the prospective buyers and it, uh, there was a few main ones that did a lot that quit but there are still a few more around that do that um I probably would go that route personally. I would probably choose, I don't know, one of the moderators or uh, one of the couple of people that I've traded with a whole bunch that's really reputable in the community. Um, disputes. Um, as this is a buy, sell, and trade page, Disputes are going to happen from time to time. The worst thing you can do is run up the post of the person you have a dispute with and trash talk them on their post and jack their post and blow the post up and just create drama. The best route to go is message a moderator. So let me go to make market home. The best, if you go here, and, and if you have a problem with a trade, message them. You know, you can, you can list all kinds of things. You can link, uh, you know, screenshots of all your receipts, um, all the 
conversations, you know, every every bit of the transaction, and you can link it to a moderator for them to then investigate. Then the moderator will reach out to the second party and be like, hey, what's going on here? Such and such said this happened. They have screenshots to prove it. What's your side of the story? And if that person can't provide the receipts to back their side of the story, um, then the moderation team will side with the person who filed the dispute. But then again, if the person who had the dispute filed against them has all the receipts proving that the person who filed the dispute is wrong, then the moderation team will be forced to side with them. And sometimes it's not as easy as that. Sometimes there's middle ground that you have to that has to be met. And it's a tricky ordeal. Every dispute is different. Um but never ever take your disputes to the post. Please, that is that's not the way to handle things. Always, always take it to the PMs and message a moderator. Rule and fraction. These will happen, uh, especially simple ones like wrong title format, no time stamped, incorrect date in time stamp, not all items listed in timestamp. The most frequent of them all is reposting within 48 hours. That is the most broken rule on the subreddit. Um, and this is a daily, daily occurrence. And, and a lot of times by the same people, you know, breaking the 48-hour posting rule. And, in, you know... On all all the infractions, the first time you'll you'll just be given a warning, and they'll make a little note on on your profile, you know, saying on this date they had incorrect timestamp and um, yada yada yada, um, reposting, and if if a person keeps reposting in a short amount of time, they will get a three-day ban um but you know if you get one rule infraction it's nothing to sweat about i myself have had rule infractions for reposting on accidents um so it's not something to sweat super hard but it is something to be mindful of um also the um the mech market discord has nothing to do with the mech market reddit so be mindful of that so if you make a trade with somebody on the mech market discord and it doesn't go through you can't go to the mech market reddit and try and get help because they're not affiliated whatsoever so just be mindful of that for everyone. Um, so we're nearing the end of the video. I hope this video will give you a good guide to begin your deep dive. That is r slash mech market. Trust me, it gets easier as it goes. And generally, generally there's a lot of very nice people very nice and helpful people and the moderation team is amazing which is why this sub has so few issues i love this community so much even though i take hiatuses from sometimes due to life reasons but i will always come back thank you for watching leave a like if this video helped you in any way and i'm always open to any feedback in the comment section Thank you. Goodbye. Also, one quick thing I wanted to add on to the end of video that I completely forgot to put about put in the middle. 
I am sorry it is right after the ending. But for those of you that do not like to buy keyboards at a markup, here is a website, metgroupbuys.com. You can look up live group buys for switches, upcoming interest check, keyboards, live. You can see all the live keyboards right now that are in group buy. You can see the upcoming group buys. You can see the interest check group by interest checks. Some of the boards you might see coming down the road in the future. There's just loads of them. So for those of you that have patience, this is a good website to monitor. Even keycaps, you can see which keycaps are live at the moment. You know, see which ones really catch your eye you see which ones are upcoming and yeah it is an excellent tool i will leave this um web this website down in the description and you can just add it on to your little toolbar and you can just check it periodically so yeah sorry for putting this at the end but um again have a great one love you guys bye